We spent a lot of money on cameras, on lenses, on lighting, microphone, uh, gimbals, and other accessories in order to get the best footage and photos that we can. But when it comes to editing, color grading, and color correcting, a lot of us might be missing what could be the most important part, the monitor. What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today I wanna to talk about monitors designed specifically for photographers and videographers. We all use all this great equipment to get the best images and the best footage that we can, but that's really just the first part. A lot of us then take those files and then tweak them in our editing software. Now here's something that used to happen to me all the time. I'd take a picture or shoot some footage, I'd get it on my computer, start editing in Lightroom or using Lumetri in Premiere Pro, and then I get it to look exactly how I want. Then I send it to my phone so that I can share with my friends or let a client preview it and... Why does it look like that? Why does it look so green? So then I start this whack-a-mole game where I try to make it look good on my phone, uh, but then it doesn't look good on my desktop or it looks good on my laptop, but it doesn't look good on my phone. And I really have no way of knowing which device to trust. And that's because not every display we use is calibrated properly. And if you use a device that's not calibrated and you work really hard to get the image to look good on that device, you're gonna be super disappointed when you look at it on another one. Now, not too long ago, BenQ reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try their new 32 inch 4K photo and video editing monitor. And I thought, sure, let's see the difference between a good all around monitor, which is what I use, and the professional grade display. Now, if you ever wondered why movies that you see in the theaters look so good on your TV, on your computer, on your phone, that's because professional color grading is done on perfectly calibrated high-end monitors. So when the colorist sits there and they're making changes to temperature or tint or when they're working with the color wheels, they know that if they get skin tone to look just how they want on their display, it's actually gonna be accurate in the final product. And that's where the new SW321C from BenQ has been so good. I mean, I expected it to be better than what I was using, I just didn't expect it to be that much better than what I was using. Color correcting and color grading is really nuanced and you're generally not making huge changes unless you shot something using the wrong white balance. And even then, you get the general look that you're going for and then you make very subtle tweaks until you get the exact look that you want. So you can see how if a monitor has a green shift or a magenta shift, or if it's too cold or too warm, it's gonna make it really challenging to color correct well. And it's also hard to notice this if you don't have a baseline because our brain compensates for light temperature changes. When you go from tungsten lighting inside and you walk outside into daylight, it's not like everything turns blue like it would with our cameras if they're set to the wrong white balance. And that's again, because our brain can make that adjustment for us. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this monitor and I'll start out with the basics and then we'll get to what makes this monitor an absolute beast. And I'll end up showing you how I incorporated it into my workflow. All right, so the first thing that got my attention was the size. I mean, I knew it was 32 inches and my current monitors are 24 inches, but it's actually a really big difference. And the next thing I noticed is just how matte the screen is. And I did some research and BenQ used a panel with the highest grade of anti-reflection and anti-glare. I was testing it out by pointing all these lights at it and it does a ridiculously good job at diffusing lights that are coming from the environment and reducing glare. So like right now, there's a huge light here pointed right at it, and you can see that there isn't really a ton of glare or reflection. Everything from the base to the stand to the actual monitor itself seems really well built, and the stand lets you move the monitor up and down and swivel it side to side. And I also love the fact that you can rotate it to get it into vertical mode. If you watched any of my videos, including my office tour, you know that 
two of my six monitors are actually vertical and you know why I have them that way. Now BenQ also includes a shading hood which blocks overhead and side lights from creating glare. And I'm gonna show it to you both with and without the hood in this video because I want you to see different angles but when I'm actually using it to do work, I always leave the hood on to get the best performance. But from this angle, I just couldn't have it take up any more of the frame, so I'm showing it to you without. As far as color gamut, which in this context is the range of colors that the display can reproduce, we get 100% of sRGB, 99% of Adobe RGB, and 95% DCI-P3. And that's versus something like 82% DCI-P3 that I get on my current monitors. Now within that range, we also want to look at color depth, which is how many different gradients and tones of each of those colors the monitor can display. And you may be familiar with these terms. So my current monitor is an 8-bit display, meaning that it can show almost 16.7 million colors. But this new BenQ display is a 10-bit display, so it can show over 1 billion colors. 1 billion colors. So that means when we look at color gradients, like a picture of the sky during sunset, the actual gradient or color transitions will be smoother with less banding because the monitor can show so many more colors in between. This is a 4K display, and it's the first time that I incorporated a 4K monitor into my workflow. So all my other monitors are 1920 by 1200 displays. This is 32 inches, 16 by nine, so you're getting 3840 by 2160, which means that I can now watch 4K video at full resolution. And in case you don't know, 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p. So now my images and footage look much more crisp and I can see a lot more of the small details. Now pretty much everyone knows that a higher resolution is gonna be sharper, but there's also a matter of how big the display is. If I took a very small 4K display, you wouldn't really be able to tell because at a normal viewing distance, our eyes can't actually see the difference. But as the display gets bigger, you can really tell the difference between 1080p and 4K. Now, something else that we wanna look at when we're looking at monitors for editing is the display panel type. So the SW321C is an IPS display, which stands for in-plane switching. And this is a technology that helps you get a more consistent view from different angles without any significant contrast and color shifts. So if you're not sitting directly in front of the monitor, for example, if you have a dual monitor setup, so each one of them is a little bit off to the side, you'll get a much more consistent look with an IPS display. And by the way, speaking of multiple monitors, each one of these comes pre-calibrated with a unique color report. And BenQ says that they make sure that monitors from different production lines will actually display color at identical levels. And this is critical when you're working with multiple monitors. When I upgraded my monitors, I already had three, and so I thought I would just buy three more. Nope, one of the new monitors matched and the other two didn't match. They were a lot cooler. Like you put them side by side and it looked terrible. I ended up having to go through 18 monitors to get six that would actually match. And because these new monitors are designed to deliver professional results, it's great to see that BenQ has taken this seriously. Now, just because a monitor can show you all these colors and tones, it doesn't mean that it's gonna show them to you accurately. And BenQ's AQ color technology gives you accurate reproduction of the colors so that each color is shown in just how it was intended to. The 16-bit lookup table or LUT improves color blending for very precise reproduction and the Delta E is under two in both Adobe RGB and sRGB color spaces so that assures that you're getting really good accuracy. Now, something else that BenQ does is they divide the display into subregions with what they call their uniformity technology. And that means that the entire display is consistent in terms of brightness, contrast, and color. So on some displays, you'll notice that there's almost like a vignetting effect where the corners 
or the top or the bottom are a little bit darker than the center of the screen. And that's not something that you're gonna get on this display. And you know what, let's actually get some pictures on here and see what it looks like. Let's grab this laptop over here. Let's bring that up. Let's see what we can get up here in terms of pictures. See what this thing, so the old display by the way had this like purple, thanks, laptop. Uh, but now it's black and I like that. Let's go, this is a picture from my latest review of the Sony a6600. I like how this came out. Um, this one I think is from the a6400. Like it looks amazing in real life. I don't know how it looks in this video. Does it look good? It looks really good over here. Here's a sunset picture. So here, as I was talking about like the gradients here, going from super bright. I mean, there's no banding at all. Um, and here is a cool, well, I think it's cool, night shot that I took with the X-T30. All right, so let's just leave this one on or we'll go back to these flowers. We'll put these flowers up here. All right, so each display is calibrated right out of the box, but over time, every display loses color. And that's why it's great that the SW321C is compatible with hardware calibration, which then lets you recalibrate it. I use the i1 Display Pro Plus from X-Rite, which works with Palette Master Element. Now what's cool is that the adjustments are actually made to the internal image processing chip on the display. So it doesn't actually change anything as far as graphic card settings. Now this monitor also comes with a second generation hotkey puck, which lets you change color modes and other settings the exact same way, regardless of which operating system you use. You can adjust color brightness with a dial and you can navigate the on-screen display. You can also use the three single function keys so that you can easily switch between different color modes. And if you wanna change these default settings, you can do that using the on-screen display. Now, an interesting feature for photographers is something called paper color sync, which is a proprietary technology that lets you simulate printing results on the screen by picking the color gamut, printer model, and paper type. And this is kind of cool because you can see what the same print would look like if it's printed with different settings, but you're saving a ton of time and money at the same time and you don't have to wait for it. All right, so now I wanna talk about how I've been using this monitor and my plans for the future. Now, one of the challenging things for me when I'm testing monitors is because of my monitor setup, I can't really take one monitor off and add another one because it's not gonna match the other ones. So what I have is a dedicated workstation where I do color grading and color correcting. So I can do all my basic editing on the main workstation and since I'm working right off the NAS, I can just open the project from my dedicated workstation and do all my color grading there on this new monitor. This screen is really big, so I have plenty of real estate if I'm working in 1080p, and it means that I can see full resolution in just a quarter of the screen. That leaves me a lot of space for the timeline and for any other panels like Lumetri, for example. I can also connect the monitor to my laptop like I showed you using a USB-C cable, and that will go ahead and give me audio, video, and power. All right, so I'd love to know what you thought about this new monitor, and is this something that you would consider adding to your setup? I was blown away by the performance, and it's a very noticeable difference going back and forth. I'm considering putting it on wheels and having it connected to both systems so I can just use it from the main workstation. I wanna thank BankQ for reaching out to me and I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, please let me know by leaving a comment, giving it a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. For more tutorials or if you wanna join the conversation, come follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.